Hello, harmonica friends. I am here with harp customizer extraordinaire and funny man in the hat, Sugarcane yeah. Hamilton. We are going to look at some customizing and repairing harmonicas. Subscribers have been asking what to do when they've got a faulty harmonica and um, problems with the harmonica. We're going to look at a few little skills that they might be able to do themselves or they might want to send to you if they want an expert to do it really, really well. So I think we're going to start by looking at retuning a harmonica. Is that right? Perfect, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and we're going to look at what you've got. So which harp are we going to work right. on now? This is the one I've got for us at the moment. It's standard stock straight from Hohner, Germany. And uh, where we're going with this is we're going to open it up. The case up there. Uh, now to open one of these up, Firstly, just uh, you need a sharp blade. Uh, does that have a fancy um, industry name? That knife. Uh, it, uh, the Slayer. <laughs> the Slayer. The Harp Slayer. <laughs> okay. So what we're doing here, if you can get up close, we want to yeah. slide it. It's best if you've got a forty-five degree edge and a flat blade yeah. on on the back end there, so it slides nicely underneath. Um, from here, you don't want to add any pressure. You just want to give it a little wiggle, not to take it all the way up straight away, because you'll bend this metal over here. So you want to, again, slide underneath and give it a little wiggle. A little shimmy. Yeah, and then as soon as you've got it, so it's it's barely on. Yeah. We can then just go I see. and take the, the last of the heightage yeah. <laughs> off. And then you've exposed the top plate. Um, I'm going to expose the bottom plate now. Yeah. So these are going to be the draw reeds we're going to see now, and yeah. that, they'll be on the outside of oh, the, yeah. the reed plate. I forgot to explain that one. Blow plate, that's your uh, top plate is your blow yeah. plate, and draw reeds are on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, draw reeds are exposed. You can actually yeah. work on your draw reeds a lot easier yeah. than you can with your blow reeds. So yeah. for the purpose sake of this demo, we're going to use the draw reeds. Um, basically, we're going to look at tuning. So if you come over here, Liam, I'm going to set the tuner. Yes. So it's at 441 at the moment. Now I want to tune to 442 hertz because what that yeah. does is when the cover plates go back on, it drops down to 440 hertz, okay. uh, which is your A equals 440 hertz tuning, which will give you well, the correct pitches. Yeah. Um, so by looking at that, I'm going to draw hole one. That gives us a plus three cents. Okay. Plus five. Now it will go up and down because of the condensation buildup. But that's quite precise in terms of it. It will tell you that that's quite a small uh, distance, yeah, but, but it's very precise. So you can know you can know to a few cents how how close you are. Yeah. Th this this is uh, wh where I go with this. I hit. I want to be looking at around about plus four cents for the right. one draw. Um, this is picking up as three, four, or five mm -hmm. uh, plus cents. Uh, mm. So it's bang on plus four. Uh, yeah. Basically, to my ear, I only work on the tuner for the mm -hmm. first sitting, and then the rest of it's to ear because mm. I tune to the octave, uh, which I'll demonstrate just now. I'm going to draw mm -hmm. hole four now, which is the uh, on the draw plate. So that's plus four, plus five. Yeah. Um, and the, it's exactly the same note as the draw one, except it's an octave up. Now if I play these together, you should find mm -hmm. that they're almost perfect. Yeah. Um, what I've got to do there is just up tune the whole one, uh, just to get it in par mm -hmm. with the whole four, which the whole so, four was... So the whole one is a little bit flat, is it? Yeah, by one sense. That's yeah. me being a customizer. It, yeah. I've got to do it because yeah. it'll bug me. Um, so, so what are we doing here then? What's this fancy thing you've got under the reed at the minute? This, oh, this is the the tool lifter, which I, I make these by hand. <laughs> it's it's basically your average gauge shim uh, for car metal work, and uh, I flattened. Basically, it's like a blade with no with yeah. no edge. That goes. And what's that gonna? Is that just gonna stabilize the reed whilst you're working on it? Yeah, is it? it stabilizes it. Holds its uh, basically. It holds its shape. Holds mm -hmm. everything. So you're not gonna. You, what you don't want to be doing is pressing down too much on your yeah. reeds. Uh, you want to keep them suspended so you don't um, actually you know dis dislodge it or take away the actual uh, reed shape or your gap. Uh, obviously, that all changes the pitch. Mm -hmm. So. 
I'm going to be tuning with this little bad boy here. Ooh, it's fancy. a foot pedal. So I'm going to put the foot pedal on the floor. Uh, mm -hmm. This, yeah, it, it's my go-to uh, tuning device. And all I want to do is just that much. Okay, so a tiny little bit. That was one cent's mm. worth of uh, reed metal. And we're doing we're doing this because if you take weight off the free end of the reed, that's going to raise the pitch. It raises something. the pitch, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate it the other way around in a second. So this should, on the tuner now, be a plus four hitting okay. five. Yeah, there Bang you go, on. four, five, yeah. Now the octave's spot on. Yeah. So it so, all just took that little dink, yeah, but, that's but with, it. with the right tool. Little, little, little fraction of a dink. <laughs> and we can see that, that little mark there from where you've taken that, so that's good illustration. Yeah, um, I don't usually use these. I usually use my rubber wheel, but for the benefit of this video, it's mm -hmm. best I use this to actually show you yeah. a mark in this. This is so light, it doesn't. Mm. It just looks like a polished yeah. reed. So probably, if someone's at home thinking their harmonica's out of tune, it's going to be more out of tune than that. It's not going to be a, a scent show, like that, is it? Shall I yeah. show them a dodgy dodgy? That would that'd be great, yeah. Right, let's, we're going to drop the whole two draw down. So what I'm doing here, uh, let's make it sound. That's your whole two. It's already out of pitch. It's minus eight. It should be plus two cents. Okay. We're going to take it right down. So you're you're taking some weight off the, the rivet end of the reed. That lowers, so that will actually lower the pitch That will lower now, the pitch. Just so that we... flatter. So we've got one quite out of tune, so we can then work on it. Oh yeah. We need it more. Even more. Um, that was probably really badly out of tune <laughs> stock. Um, we just hit it like this. Oh. Do not do this at home. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no. I think well, they'll have to make a melodic minor with this place. Ooh. Right, that's minus 12 now, yeah. so it's minus 12 cents from equal temp. So basically it wants to be plus plus one or plus two cents over yeah. equal. Yeah. Um, so and ju just a quick question, why do we want it slightly over? Is that to do with when you play you might, you might get pulled down a bit or...? It sort of is, but it also keeps your chord in tune. We want the chord sounding nice yeah. and not raspy, so the yeah. two draw needs to be plus two to give mm -hmm. you... A nice perfect chord that sounds awful and raspy. So what we're <laughs> going to do is bring the chord yeah. back in. Yeah. Can you hear that now? Yeah. We've got a beating octave. Yeah. So that's something that players might have heard in their playing. Sometimes they'll, they'll play an octave split, two, two notes an octave apart, and there's like a beat, like you said, a beating octave, where, where, which actually tells you that things aren't quite right. Yeah. You know, they're not quite in tune. Awful chord. So I know for a fact we've got to, we've got to up pitch, um, you know, to go from minus 12 to back up to plus two. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do here is take metal off the front. This is going in reverse, so I can't actually twang the reed. Uh, if you've got it so that, um, sorry, over here a sec, yeah. if you've got it so that this is in forward, the motor goes the other way, okay. and it will twang your reed, and you'll scoop the reed bed, uh, mm -hmm. the reed plate up, and then you've got, you know, a problem then mm -hmm. because you, you've created a big massive arc, right. and uh, you've got to watch yeah. out. So as with with anything like this, people have to be kind of careful and make sure they know what they're doing. Oh yeah. And if if in doubt, you know, send it to someone like yourself who does this every day, Definitely. is do is um, always doing repair jobs for people and have got the kit. Yeah, basically, if if it's only a matter of uh, retuning, and you've got this spinning the right way, it's mm. seconds. But if you go to spin the wrong way mm. and you twang it, then you've yeah. got to replace the reed. And, if, and if we we saw before that you would fine tuning. It was just a second. And if you do that too much, you send it way off the other way. Oh, yeah. and, and then you've got a problem. You've got to tune it back and you're back and forth. Because we, we just hit this. Uh, well, we, we'll, ho hopefully it'll show it on this two draw here. But we hit that really hard a second mm. ago because um, we want to get it up from minus 12 to plus two cents. So... Uh, 
it still needs another bashing. <laughs> we yeah. took that quite far. Yeah, um, we were pretty so nasty. Go, we'll that. go back in with it. And I'm going to stop there. That, that, that mm. felt like about seven cents. <laughs> I like the way you can feel that. Nearly mm. seven cents, so it's yeah. about uh, five. Right, we want it just that much because we've got to bring it into yeah. the plus two range. There's that you see yeah. the plus two there, yeah. so that should so that's the chord getting, yeah. Yeah. back into so. sync. Now, if I tuned um, all three there, three draws slightly off, mm. I can hear that. I just drop that down. Sorry, whole whole three. I'm just gonna round the chord off. The whole three should be minus thirteen, minus fourteen. So we're dropping that down from eight minus eight cents. Mm. That'll ding dang do. Yeah. It's just just that little you know off sense. It, that's that's where your chords round off really so, nice. So there's a couple of things as a player for me that come out of this in terms of. On the one hand, you've got when a harmonica is way out of tune and you're playing it and you're thinking, this just sounds bad. You you can cure that. But also, yes. even if you're not massively aware of something being way out as a player, you, what you can do is fine-tune a harmonica just to make it really, really sweet. Yeah. And you you can hear that as a customizer, Like you said, oh, I can hear that's a couple of cents out or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone sends a harmonica to you and they get it back after, after kind of fine-tuning it, they they're gonna find new realms of kind of sound with it that they yes. sort of didn't know they could get beforehand. Yeah, definitely. It's a, you know obviously stock. It's the stock that's being pumped out has to be well pumped out. It's it, mm. nothing's perfectly in tune. Um, so when you do do the fine sense and, and fine tuning, it just creates a different. Like you say, a different realm. It's it just pulls everything nice and mm. you get this uh, everyone calls it the sugar tonality because my signature off sense it, it's my personal 19 limit it's a hybrid of Hona mm. and Seidel it's the best of both worlds and uh, gave you it gives you that warm darker tonality to um, what these are you know come out of the factory as mm. yeah yeah thank you very much Kane yeah, cheers <laughs>